We're religious. Religious, religion kills. Religion does nothing but preaches law. It kills. It destroys. What did you do last night to build your church that you said to me? What did you do last week to build your church that you said to me? What did you do for your fellow man? Was it all about you? <coughs> Was it all about your pain? Was it all about what you love? If it was, you're right. You're right. Nothing but the conscience. Religion gives. Some people wonder how I can love people. Listen, you can stand right beside me and cuss. I don't say nothing about that. You can smoke, you can cuss, you can smoke, you can do whatever you want to do around me. I want to say a word to God because I can talk to you. Hallelujah. But do you know what? I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to let you get attached to me but to make me do it. You, can, you put a dead man and he put him on you. You let that dead man uh, be tied to your leg and you drag him around and see Infection will seep into you and you will rot and you will die. That's what a lot of people are doing now because they're connected to death. They're connected to death because they can't love their brother. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love. Thank you. 
when you love your brother, when you love somebody or you love something, the Bible says you can make down your life for it. Hallelujah. When was the last time that you made down your life for it? He says, here, it says, hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brother. But whoso hath the world's goods and seeth his brother in need and shutteth up his vows of compassion from him. How the well of the love of God in him. Amen. How does the love of God dwell in you when, when you shut your vows of compassion? I'm just talking to you the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness. Righteousness will have compassion and do. Unrighteousness will keep going. Like one day I was in the truck with somebody and somebody had a flat tire. And there was a, a man trying to fix the flat tire and there was three men standing around him. And the other man said, well, I will stop. It looks like he had a pretty head. I told him, I said, sir, I said, what if they're standing around because they need a jack or, or they need something? Maybe, maybe they're standing around because they're lacking something. Maybe they need it. Maybe they need it. something that they don't have. And we turned around, and sure enough, they need to what, what, what is that thing? Take another one? What? Yeah. And you can guess who made We had just exactly what they need. See, a lot of times if you don't watch it, you'll pass by somebody and you'll see three or four with them and you'll see things look like he's going to do it. Oh, and you'll say, well, it looks like they got all the help they need. Come on. And in the meanwhile, you probably got the very thing that they need. What I'm trying to tell you today, church, in a good kind of way, is don't ever assume that they have what they need. Hallelujah. My dad told me, he said, son, he said, don't ever think people's going to do what you expect. They always do what you expect. People never do what you expect. They do what you inspect. That means you've got to, sometimes you've got to inspect them. Sometimes you've got to bring them to the front of the to, uh, in front of the page here and say, "Hey, how how are you doing? What what do you need? How what's going on in your life?" And all of a sudden, you know, we get to open up and tell you what's going on in their life. The Lord may have you to give them a testimony that will turn their life around. That will destroy. Yeah. 
there, that is the man. You know what that means? That means he came, Sister Victoria, and he took on flesh. The Bible says he took on flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, he took on flesh. Woo! Hallelujah. We need to understand. Oh, the world doesn't understand this, but, the, but Jesus was, he was not made like an angel. He didn't come in the form of an angel, but he came in the same flesh that he could destroy the works of the devil through death. Through death, he destroyed the works of the devil. The Bible says, through death, he destroyed him. He took away the power of death. See, when you become a true Christian, and I'm about to close, but you need to listen to me. When you become a true Christian, you don't fear death. Because you know you will live forever. When you become a true Christian, you'll say, you may destroy this body, but you cannot destroy this soul. Because I am a son. Because I have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of me. Oh, what I'm trying to say to you today, church, he says through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. What does the Bible say? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That means Jesus is going to come one day and he's going to tell death to take a hike. He's going to tell death that, hallelujah, you have no more authority. You won't be able Unlimited power. 
It's angry. She can do anything that stands. My musicians can come this morning. Here's what we need to understand. Christ removed Satan's heart. Meaning every time he mentions the name of Jesus, his heart is removed. God, this God disarms your enemy. Before you wake up the enemy, he's got a plan. He's going to try to execute over you. And you get up under the power of the Holy Ghost and, and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And all of a sudden, you speak with the word. And he can't decipher if it's you or the Son of God himself. And all of a sudden, when you speak, it disarms the enemy. Hallelujah. Because his work was destroyed on the cross. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to tell you today, church, is when we begin to speak things into existence, uh, hallelujah, under the power and the faith of God, do you know what happens? Uh, you disarm the enemy of your life uh, and you're able to win the war. There's people today that you need something from God. But because it's 12 o'clock, the system says, we gotta wrap this thing up. Why? It looks like Brother Bay would hurry up. It looks like half the congregation is asleep. I don't care. <laughs> you learn more in these subconscious than you do anyway when you're awake. So <laughs> sleep on, most God. I'll be done in a little while. I mean, Jesus didn't even get them to stay awake in the garden just soon in one hour. Well, he was a man. Let me tell you something. It's, it's painful for a pastor to preach what I preach today. Because people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear what they're doing wrong or what they may be doing wrong. But I'm not trying to focus on that. I'm trying to focus on how God did teach you. With that unlimited grace that cannot be measured. That cannot be comprehended. Church, God wants you to understand. This is why we celebrate Christmas. Is because we celebrate His birth. We celebrate everything He's done for us. Church, what does Christmas mean? It means peace in inner our lives. It means that He came to bring peace. It means He made peace on Calvary. It means He is our eternal peace. It means a way that heaven will be made. It means a way to heaven would be made. Woo it means a it means a way is promised by Christ. It means a way is made by God's love. It means a way is made by Christ's death. It all means in the death of Christ. He laid down his life for you. So we ought to lay down our life for others. You will send you be all the good. Shake yourself like Samson did. Wake up. Let's get ready to destroy the works of the enemy. Go ahead, brother, be excited. If you're here, there is power.